Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the G-Box Midnight MX2, which is an Android TV box. Uh, it's basically a little box that you stick next to your TV in order to run Android apps on the big screen. And this particular model is a little different from some of the others that we've seen because it is really optimized to run the XBMC Media Center application for Android. So uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what comes in the box here. There's the box itself. We'll get to that in a second. A remote control, some audio video cables, and a power adapter and user manual. And that's pretty much it. The um, box works not just with this audio video cable setup, but also with HDMI uh, power. You can plug it in uh, to any standard power jack. And the box itself features a nice range of input and output options. Uh, so you can see we've got HDMI, audio video cables, SPDIF, uh, USB, Ethernet, power. And there's actually four USB ports, a full-size SD or MMC card slot, and uh, that's about it for the box itself. Um, under the hood, it's running an Amlogic ARM Cortex-A9 dual-core processor, uh, Mali 400 graphics, one gig of RAM, 8 gigs of storage, and it supports uh, 802.11bgn Wi-Fi, and that Ethernet is a um, uh, 10 by 100 Ethernet jack. It runs Google Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. The remote control runs on two AAA batteries, and it uh, has some uh, basic media functions, things that you would expect from sort of a regular TV remote, and it is an infrared TV style remote control. Um, number buttons, forward, pause, stop, uh, skip track, etc., and uh, arrow keys and an OK key. And some of these buttons work uh, pretty well with Android. So there's a menu key, for instance. Um, the return key acts as a back key. Uh, OK is for selecting and so forth. And there's also a little cursor button here, which you can press to turn this into sort of a, a mouse. You can press the right arrow and move a mouse cursor right, left arrow, and so forth. Um, it doesn't work perfectly uh, for everything that you would want to do with Android. Uh, you're going to be better off plugging in a mouse and a keyboard or touchpad or a game controller if you say want to play games or surf the web. But for basic media controls and especially for something like the XBMC Media Center, this remote control is going to be pretty much all you need. And so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how it works when it's all plugged in and turned on. Okay, so here we are. We're plugged in to a 32-inch TV and I'm going to hit the power button on the remote control and that should turn it on. So you can see I'm using the remote control to navigate here. But I've also plugged in a wireless uh, keyboard with a built-in touchpad and that makes entering text and navigating the Android interface a lot easier. And the reason for that is that using the remote control and navigating the XPMC Media Center and some other applications, uh, the remote works perfectly. But when it comes to entering text or playing games or even just surfing the web, I find that having a, uh, a physical keyboard helps improve things quite a bit. Uh, boot is relatively quick. You can see here in about 30 seconds uh, we're into Android. And we've got this custom uh, app launcher which is designed to work with a, um, a keyboard or with the remote control. And so you navigate just sort of by clicking the arrow buttons to go left and right. Uh, if we go into settings, you can see though that we are running sort of the full Android operating system here. We're connected to my Wi-Fi network and so forth. But I can use these buttons to go up and down and uh, adjust things. Now some things are difficult to adjust using the uh, remote control. So for instance, if you wanted to set the time manually, I find that uh, the buttons on here just don't really they're not conducive to it. And that's why I like to plug in a keyboard and mouse because then I can use the cursor and click and I can change things that way. In this case, let's just go ahead and switch back to automatic time. Um, likewise, if you install some games, for instance, let's see here, let's go to all apps. I've uh, went ahead and installed Pac-Man just to show you that you can run games on this, but they're not really optimized for, uh, for remote control input. After this, we'll go ahead and show you what this is really good at, which is um, navigating XBMC and Media Center applications. So let's go ahead and tap the screen. Let's abandon the game and start a new game. 
and play Pac-Man. Now from here, if I try to use the remote control, I'm going to hit the up and down and so forth buttons, and nothing happens. And that's because this game is really designed for touch. So even clicking the screen does nothing. What you have to do is swipe. So you can sort of emulate using a touchpad playing a game like Pac-Man as if you were on a smartphone or a tablet, but it's really not an ideal experience. So if you wanted to use this to play a lot of games, you might want to uh, invest in a different type of uh, input, like a, a keyboard and touchpad or a uh, video game controller. Uh, what it does well, though, is uh, actually while we're still looking at sort of keyboard and uh, touchpad, let's take a quick look. Uh, you can go to the web browser, and there are shortcuts here to lots of websites, which is great, but when it comes to actually opening the web browser, and surfing, you're gonna have a much easier time, I think, if you have a keyboard and mouse, and you can say, go to lilaputing.com. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there's a, a keyboard that shows up even though I'm typing, and that's designed specifically for use with this um, remote control, but typing with it is kind of a pain. You can sort of click around one button at a time and then switching, say, if you want the at key, you have to hit down here and then go up and find it. So the whole process is a little bit more work than it needs to be, which is why I like to use a external keyboard. And you can install a third party keyboard from the Play Store called Null Keyboard, which will like, mean that no keyboard even shows up when you're typing using an external keyboard. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the home area and I'll show you what works nicely here. Actually, I don't want to go into all apps. I want to go into online Simnema. And from here, let's go ahead and load XBMC. And this is something that the uh, uh, developers of this particular box put a lot of work into, which is porting XBMC. Uh, I mean, it's already been ported to run on Android, but it runs really quite nicely on this particular device. So. Uh, right now, I don't have any uh, flash storage, USB flash storage drive or SD card or anything plugged in here. I'm connecting to a shared network drive uh, on my home network. And normally it connects a little bit more qu quickly than this, but here we go. So I have a bunch of videos that I recorded uh, off of broadcast television here. And let's go ahead and play one. This is encoded as a 720p DivX file. And again, it's streaming over my network over an 802.11b uh, G or N connection. Uh, I believe it's probably G here. Skip ahead so we can actually see what's going on. Logical pursuit. So play, pause, skip, everything sort of works nicely. Uh, that's a DivX file, 720p encoding. Let's try an MP4 file. This is a uh, H.264 recording. So it can take a, a moment to load the files, but once they're running, everything works pretty nicely. And the fact that I can skip ahead here so quickly and easily um, is sort of a nice feature too, because that's something that a lot of other devices I've tried just don't work. I was just, just starting to feel like home too. Played in the yard. I held her son in my arms, hanging on through. And there's no audio or video sync issues. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with XBMC performance uh, with video streaming. Now you can also, let's go back a menu here install a number of add-ons. So you can see here I've got a few, Hulu, The Onion, YouTube, uh, Funny or Die, and stream content over the internet. And that works pretty well too. Let's go ahead and... Um, Now it can take a little bit longer to stream this stuff over the internet, and the biggest problem, I think, is that the way the Hulu plugin works, 
it opens each individual stream one at a time. So here we are, we're starting to watch a video. Not sure why it's not playing. Um, but if it starts to play an ad, for instance, when you, um, okay, let's try a different episode. Uh, so when you start watching a video, say it's a 42 minute movie or a TV episode, um, and a commercial is supposed to play towards the middle, this normally works just fine. Um, what'll happen is if you wanted to rewind to a point before the commercial starts, you're going to run into difficulty because um, you just don't have the same sort of timeline that you would normally get uh, using the Hulu desktop or Hulu website. The following okay, so you can see video playback does work here. Commercial interruption by Qualcomm Snapdragon with the Hulu plugin. And video quality is pretty good. And we can play, pause, rewind, and so forth. So that's a quick look at the Hulu plugin. Uh, YouTube works, a lot of other things work. And one of the things that's really nice here is that if you look at the get more section for the add-ons, uh, instead of having to install repositories manually in order to get a lot of the uh, video plugins that are available for XBMC, they come preloaded here. So if we scroll through this list, you'll see that Amazon, Hulu, everything that doesn't come straight out of the box, Al Jazeera here, uh, PBS, they're all available. Now some of the ones that are available are things that you might not want your kids to see. This comes even with the uh, support for adult repositories, so you can watch adult videos on your screen. Uh, you might want to actually go in and disable some of those on this box if you want it to be a family-friendly bo box. But um, out-of-the-box support for a wide range of video formats and for all sorts of different plugins that let you do online video, which helps make the XBMC experience pretty interesting and pretty great here. So that's XBMC, which works pretty nicely here, um, but then you can also exit XBMC. Let's go ahead and hit the return button a couple of times. And exit. Now I've noticed that sometimes when you try to exit this app, it actually gets stuck. And that seems to be happening here. Um, I can go to the home screen to try and get out of it. And let's go ahead and try and launch Netflix, which is another online video app that uh, comes preloaded on the device. Now the problem is uh, Netflix here is an application that's really designed for a smartphone or a tablet. And so you can't just navigate this the same way that you do Netflix using the remote control. You can scroll down and scroll up, but searching isn't going to work as well. And uh, even clicking to play, you're going to need to use the on-screen cursor. So I click the cursor button and I can actually drag a cursor around here to try and handle video, but the, uh, the user interface isn't quite as friendly as XBMC for remote control input. So let's try watching a video using nothing but the uh, cursor. If you wanted to search, you're probably going to want to plug in a keyboard and mouse though. And normally video playback works great here, but I think the problem is that we got stuck exiting uh, XBMC, and so now it's not working. So this box is a little bit quirky at times. You can see that as an XBMC player, it works very nicely. Um, when it comes time to sort of uh, switch between different applications, you might run into trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the box. I press the power button, turn down, turned off, and press the power button and turn it back on. I'm going to pause the recording so we can skip past this again, though. Okay, so we're rebooted. That took about 30, 40 seconds. Let's go ahead and just try and play a video, resume one that we've been watching previously. Uh, this time XBMC is closed. We're just playing a video in Netflix and it works fine. So it does support online video streaming from Netflix, YouTube, other sites. Um, but again, the 
media playback is going to be a little bit easier if you're using a keyboard and mouse or a game controller or a, a remote control application that lets you use your phone or tablet. Uh, using the built-in remote for Netflix or the, the remote that comes with the device for Netflix is not the best experience I've ever seen. Um, that said, the return button does take you back to the previous menu. So overall, as a device for media playback, it's one of the best Android-based devices I've seen. It's fast, it's responsive, um, it does a pretty uh, good job of letting you navigate through different apps. If you don't like this home screen launcher, you can uh, use the default Android home screen launcher. Uh, if you want to install additional applications, you can go to um, the Google Play Store and do that. Uh, you can use any um, uh, keyboard and mouse that you like. You can use any on-screen keyboard you like. You can play games. Um, but the, as it sort of comes to switching between applications, it can be a little bit difficult. Uh, XBMC can be a little bit finicky. It might freeze when you're trying to close it down. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily the best way to watch all of this video on your TV, but the box sells for about $100, and it's probably one of the cheapest ways to get something quite so versatile. Uh, that said, there are certain things that say if you've got a Google TV box or Roku that aren't available here. Uh, Amazon Instant Video, for instance. There's an Amazon Video app for uh, uh, Roku boxes, for a Google TV box. doesn't work on general Android boxes. Hulu Plus isn't available on a regular uh, Android box like this. Now, as you saw with XBMC, you can uh, install all sorts of plugins, and there's an Amazon plugin, but it's currently it doesn't work because uh, Amazon has implemented DRM, which means that you can't stream any video from it. So you're sort of at the mercy of the community there. Now, the main reason I'm not ready to just sort of switch over to using this is because I actually, uh, for the last couple of years, have had um, a PC plugged into my computer or into my television. And so what I've actually got is the ability to run um, Beyond TV Media Center, which works as a digital video recorder. You can see I've got all these different programs that are recorded. Um, I also have XBMC, which is running on Windows 7 here. Uh, anything that works in the version of XBMC that you just saw also works here. all the plugins, and it's at least as fast. Now, a home theater PC that you build yourself is going to cost a little bit more, you know, several hundred dollars more than something like the MX2, um, but it's going to be a little bit more versatile. It also, if you leave it on all the time, it's going to consume more energy. So there's definitely advantages to using something like the uh, MX2 to building a home theater PC for yourself. But, um, and you can see it sometimes takes a while to shut down XPMC here too. Uh, but, you know, there are certain advantages to a home theater PC, like the ability to use the Hulu desktop application, which is really um, works nicely for watching videos on a um, full screen here. So, personally, I prefer having a home theater PC with an x86 processor with Windows software. You can also have one with Linux or running uh, Apple OS X. Um, but I think it's pretty neat to be able to uh, plug in a $100 device and get the versatility that you also get with an Android device that uh, has great support for XBMC Media Center, uh, among other things. So that's a quick look at the MX2, one of the best XBMC devices that I've seen based on Google Android. Uh, a little bit more of a mixed bag if you wanted to use it for web navigation, uh, running games, doing other sorts of applications. There are faster devices around, but uh, few that handle XBMC out of the box quite as well as this one. And uh, it also has the four USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI, audio video cables. So it's a pretty versatile uh, option for somebody looking for a relatively inexpensive way to turn a standard uh, television into a smart television. And uh, I like this better than getting something like a smart TV with built-in support for apps because you can uh, upgrade the box much more frequently than you upgrade the TV. A TV you really want to keep for a couple of years, 5, 10, 15 years maybe. Uh, you're not going to want to replace it every time there's a new software update. So updating the box makes more sense than updating the TV if you ask me. So this is Brad Linder with a look at the G-Box Midnight MX2.